this past year has been tough for a lot of people. Um, I think the mask has kind of come off. Well, the mask went on, but the mask, other mask came off. Yeah. Um, with dioceses shutting down, pastors shutting down their churches, people weren't getting last rites, people weren't getting confessions, people weren't even getting baptisms. Right. Um, obviously, the devil means for evil, but God uses it for good. In your pastoral experience, and, and you have a pulse that's, I think, national, international, how is this helping the church, or at least helping a remnant? I think there's two aspects to it. One is people people are either getting serious or they're abandoning the church, one of the two. Yeah. We're not, we, we do not live at a time where you can be um, lukewarm in your faith anymore. It's just not going to happen, especially as um, it starts to become more draconian on the side of the civil governments regarding certain things, especially as they start clamping down more on the church or those who object regarding certain moral things that they may want us to be doing, et cetera. Espe you know, especially when you see the Biden administration, um, looks like there's certain things that they're going to start doing that are going to be like this whole issue with the um, transgender question in HR1, I think it is. But they're, you know, if they push that through, then the Catholic church is going to be squeezed even more and more. So we're living in a, we're living in a time in where people have to, there's no, it's, uh, it's no more, um, a time for uh, being lukewarm. The second component to it is um, a lot of people are starting to see that a, our life, even in the United States, the comfort of it, and et cetera, is extraordinarily fragile. Mm -hmm. That God can pull the plug on it. One, one of the best lines I ever heard was from my cousin who's got his doctorate in pharmaceutical chemistry. And he said to me, God could wipe out the entire living population of this planet by, by mutating a single bacteria. You know, I mean, that's how that's how, you know, we have to recognize that this is that we're living in a time where things are fragile. Things are not good. Obviously, there's societal meltdown. You're just seeing that every day on television. Not that I'd recommend that you watch too much of mainstream media. But uh, and there's all sorts of stuff that's going on. And so people are realizing there has to be something stable. And so I think there is um, there's kind of an external call on the side of God for people to come back to him. And so I think a lot of people are realizing, I got to get my act together because this is not go this is not going well. And so there's a lot of people that are, are actually trying to seek out the truth and trying to know what's right. And, and as a result of that, I think they're trying to get their um, faith lives back together. So I think that's the good that God's using it out. Of. They're starting to realize that this world isn't going to ultimately fulfill them. And so they better start shoring things up. And they're going to die. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. Now, what would you, let's say there's people watching and, and they hear you say that I want to get my spiritual life together, but they're a young person or maybe they're, they're older and they grew up in the sort of Kumbaya spirit of Vatican II generation. They right. want to get their spiritual life together, but yeah. they're now questioning what does that mean? So I'm always saying, find the Latin mass, pray the rosary every day, but there's other That's things right. as well. So, I mean, if you could just give someone a watching a punch list, there's like, I want to remove the demonic out of my life. I want to remove mortal <clears throat> sin. I want to start, right. you know, getting on the illuminative path. I want to start right. making progress. What's a good punch list? Uh, I think those for those those five that you just gave were just perfect. You know, start start attending the Latin Mass because that's one of the first things that's going to start giving you a, a a perspective spiritually. You know, I, I I don't know if you've ever heard the Taylor if you ever listened to the um, the conference. It was actually a homily gave just called the Traditionalist Challenge. I tell people, look, go exclusively to the old rite for two months, and just do it exclusively, and then go to the new Mass, and then tell me which one you're going to go to. Now, there's a bit of deception on my part, I admit, or not deception, not that, a bit of manipulation. We know in psychology that it takes three weeks to corrupt a habit and three weeks to develop a habit. That's the length of length. And so you know when they're going to the old mass, if they go that long, their sensitivities start to change. Right. And so, you know, that's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of an underhanded way, but it does provide the way for them to actually um, recognize this is where it's at. But so start going to the old mass. Start getting to confession on a regular basis. Go to priests that are going to give you serious advice, which is usually the more traditional priests. Um, there are some priests that do say the Novus Ordo Mass because they may have to or what have you. That can be very good in that regard. But make sure you're getting to a priest that's going to um, 
that's going to get that uh, uh, that's going to give you really good advice in in um, in confession because that's where a lot of your spiritual advice is going to come in confession and then in the pulpit. The, uh, the other side is make sure all your sacraments are up. You know, if you haven't been confirmed, you got to get confirmed. You've got to get your marriage straightened out. You've got to get all this stuff to, to make sure that you're leading a good Catholic life and start getting to Mass on a regular basis. Um, you know, like you said, getting the demons out of the, you, it's, we're in a spiritual warfare and it's becoming clearer and clearer, especially as things degrade in the, um, in the secular sphere, that this is really a battle of good and evil. Um, and this is this is something that they're gonna uh, people are gonna have to really shore up their spiritual lives to be able to to deal with this. Um, the, the other component, which is I think a big one, which I think um, is really important, is people have to start educating themselves more in the faith. Mm-hmm. It is not enough just to go to mass anymore. You can't do that. You have to start educating yourself in the faith, buying good catechisms like. Sparagos, reading, you know, reading the saints, reading scripture, doing all the uh, reconnect with the tradition is what they need to do. The, that's one of the things, the beauties of like tan books um, and um, Mediatrix Express, my own and a few others. It's putting people back in contact with the tradition. We don't live at a time in which you can spiritually survive and be intellectually um, not very good. I mean, maybe a few older ladies who have extraordinary graces can get away with it, but modernism is such a toxic heresy that unless you have um, a lot of educational background, which you should have to work, start be working toward anyway, because everybody has an obligation to work, um, to continue educating themselves according to their state in life. But also, um, in addition to, um, you have to have an extraordinary background, but you also have to have the grace, which means you got to be getting to mass, etc. The point being is, is that there's a, uh, they need to be reading more. Um, you know, they can listen to um, uh, your, you know, your interviews and stuff like that, my podcast, etc. That's fine, but at some point, you've got to encounter the books. You've got to start engaging the books and looking at them and reading them and educating yourself and getting a deeper understanding of the faith. So that when you hear the nonsense from the secular media, from even members of the magisterium now, um, you can keep your focus. And that's going to, and also the more you know the faith, the more you have objects of meditation, the more you're going to love the faith, the more your, your spiritual life can grow. People sometimes say, well, what's the one book? I've been raised Novus Ordo, or raised Protestant. What, where should I start to get reprogrammed in the right way? Maybe you'll disagree with me, Father, but I say Catechism of Council of Trent. It's not that long. Right. And it sets a lot of things straight. Yes, it does. Uh, it gives, it, well, it, it gives fantastic clarity about all the basic aspects of faith. So usually, in fact, when I used to bring people into the church, I made them read that. Yep. That was the text that we would go through. So I, did, I would start with that. And then if they wanted something that includes something a little bit deeper than the Catechism Explained by Spirago, which is basically the Catechism of the Council of Trent, mm-hmm. but amplified. So that's that's what I would recommend. That's where I would start. Yeah. yeah. And I think you're right. The Catechism of the Council of Trent is an, a quick place, an easy place to start. Sometimes people will say, well, should I just read the um, Catechism uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church? And I just said, <laughs> well, first of all, there's, a, there's, some, uh, there's some issues in there, and there's certain um, forms of expression that unless you have a lot of theological background, it's going to be confusing, and quite frankly, it's long, and I don't think it's as clear. So I tell people that deposit of faith hasn't changed between Trent and Vatican II, so just read the Council of Trent. It's clear, and it'll give you the better the better focus. Yeah, I agree. And I think the, the Catechism of the Council of Trent is written in a way that's more accessible, where you can, you can put it on your nightstand and you can read two to six sections a night Right. As the catechism of of the Catholic Church, I think there's some problems in there, and it's just sort of these paragraphs right. that don't really, I don't know, they're just not presented as well, I think, as, as the catechism of the Council of Trent, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, I think that the for me the real issue is we live in a time where there's a lot of confusion. Well, the opposite of confusion is clarity. Correct. Well, that's why you want to find the forms of expression of the faith that are as clear as possible. And that's why you want to go to the Catechism of the um, Council of Trent. Yep. Because of the clarity involved. 